Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today we have a mysterious tweet from Harada to talk about. This tweet almost slipped by me. I've been working on a lot of other videos. I'm really excited for you guys to see them and I wasn't really paying attention to Twitter. This almost snuck by me, but I caught it. And I do want to break it down and try to decipher the meaning behind it because I've seen a lot of people talking about this wondering is this related to Tekken 8? Is this related to Evo? Is this related to season five or some, some mysterious magical final update that's gonna come along and save the game? Now, before we even talk about this tweet and what it means, try to decipher it, I wanna go back to a tweet from two years ago from the development room. The time this video goes up, it's gonna be exactly two years, July 6, 2020. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because this tweet went nowhere. We thought Harada was teasing something because development room means they're developing this, they're working on it. That stage behind Lei isn't in the game. And this has boggled our minds for a very long time, but what I am starting to think and realize about this tweet is maybe this is cut content. If you look at season four and what we got, two characters, two stages. That is the least amount of content we have gotten in a season pass out of all of them, I think. Even in season one, when we got two characters, Geese Howard and Noctis, both of those characters had their own stages. And then on top of that, you had Tekken bowling the game mode. So even then, when they did do two characters, it was more on top. So that's just what I think in my mind. This stage behind Lee possibly could have been tied to Kiri Kazahama, possibly could have been tied with someone else, we don't know. But that's just what I think about this. The, the second reason why I bring this tweet up is because the tweet we got today could be just like this one and lead nowhere. A lot of people theorized and speculated what this from the development room tweet meant, but we got no answers. It could be the same today, hopefully it's not. I'm gonna do my best to try to decipher and just explain the things that I found about this. Six years ago today, Tekken 7 Faded Retribution was originally released at arcades worldwide. Tekken Gamer adds to this and says, this iteration of the game featured Akuma from Street Fighter, who was first revealed at the Tekken World Tour 2015 finals. I just think this tweet is fitting that it's coming at the six year anniversary of arcades release. Now. The picture itself, the tweet itself, in both Japanese and English, whenever Harada does this, that tells me importance. That tells me he wants as many people as possible to understand this, to read this. I took a mysterious photo. It's the English. Translating the Japanese, I was able to take a strange picture. There was another tweet that was posted like a day before this one and I thought these two were related because it was talking about Namco Museum of Arts episode 10 and that episode 10 was starring Tekken. I thought they were related especially because Michael Murray was also doing the same but when I went through that video and skipped through just to see if this gate showed up it didn't. This video was exclusively focused on like Tekken 1, 2, 3. Um, I didn't really see anything beyond that, but it was in Japanese. If you guys want to watch that, definitely go check it out. I, I think it was interesting just looking at it. There wasn't any you know, huge discoveries, but still worth mentioning. Now the photo itself. This photo is of a big red Japanese gate. It has the black trim at the top. And this in Japanese culture is a spiritual sort of a uh, gate. I'll read you guys the screenshots that I took. This type of gate is called a tori. A tori is a traditional Japanese gate most commonly found at the entrance of or within a Shinto shrine, where it symbolically marks the transition from mundane to sacred. It's kind of like a church. When you enter in those church doors, you're on sacred ground. Rules. Just before the tori gate to the shrine grounds, Bow respectfully once. This is a way of greeting the guardian deities of the shrine and asking permission to enter. When proceeding towards the main shrine after the Tori, 
be sure not to walk in the middle of the path, which is reserved for the guardian deities. So just three excerpts that gives us a very good and clear cut example of what this is. And an interesting thing too, this is actually in Tekken. This is actually in Kunimitsu's stage. I believe, I, I tried to count, but I think there's about four or five of them scattered throughout the stage. You can see one on left, one in the far back by the waterfall, there's one on the right, and then I believe there's one all the way up at the top of the hill, and also at the bottom. So that's like five or six, that, that's kind of a lot. This ground that they're fighting on is very sacred. They should not be fighting here. Now that we learned what this Tory gate is, what it represents, and what it means. Dissecting this image, what first stood out to me was the light on the left side. This light, looks like the type of lights that comes from a stage. Okay, cut, time out. I was looking at more images to show in the video and I came across this image. This image looked familiar and I just stared at it for a second and I was like, wait, this gate here I'm looking at is the exact same gate Harada took a picture of. If we look at the bridge, the path, you see it have that stone pathway that leads nowhere. It's a rectangle and also it's surrounded by water. Even though in Harada's photo it's super dark, you can still tell there's water on the ground. And I was wondering where does that pathway lead to? The part of the video you just saw me cut and delete was me explaining how this is probably an entrance that they're building for Evo and maybe has something to do with Tekken 8 and yada, 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 but cut all that. What I next did with this image is I Google searched it. If I could find the location of this image, I can find the gate that Harada was at when he took this picture. It didn't take me that long, but I eventually found it. So here we have a picture of a part of Japan. On the right side, you have Tokyo. Kinda in the bottom left, you have Mount Fuji. Let's zoom in on Mount Fuji. When you zoom in on Mount Fuji, now in the top left, on the bottom right, you see this small lake. Zoom in on the lake. This is Lake Ashoninoka. I seen an abbreviation saying Lake Ashi. So that's what I'll call it. If we zoom in a little bit more, you start to see water. You see where I'm going with this? You see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten docks. One of these docks has to be where the bridge is located. Zoom in a little bit more. I still couldn't see anything. So then I went to Google Maps. If you type up Lake Ashy, it takes you to this. You can see Lake Ashy. Scrolling through, looking at some pictures to see if I could see a gate anywhere. I noticed there's a lot of boats, there's a lot of cruise ships. So I, I was thinking that maybe this is a tourist attraction. It also has TripAdvisor down at the bottom of every picture. It has a ticket there. So maybe this is some tourist attraction place. Once I seen this image here, I knew we were close. This isn't the gate that Harada took a picture of, but the fact that there's a gate in the area tells me we're close. Now from here, I went to the street view. What I was trying to do too was get down on this shoreline, but Google street view, their car doesn't reach down there. That's only accessible by foot. So I was stuck to only looking for the bridge from the road. In street view, I came across the gate that we seen in the image. It's pretty big. This gate is huge. It's like two stories almost. Like look at this house here behind it. Or it's not a house, but a building. That's like two, almost three stories. And the gate is like just as tall as it. That gate is huge. Go further down the road. You guys can see I'm now traveling down this road here. Looking out into the water and then boom. If you see the picture that I showed you and also his picture, it has these little pillars, these four pillars connecting to the main structure. I cannot make out if this actually has those four pillars. I just can't tell from this distance. Once I switch to the other side, I got sort of a better view of what was happening. So the gate that I seen across the way, I think it was actually this one. As I'm looking across the ocean, right there. I tried my hardest to get a clearer shot of this, 
but I could not. I was, however, able to find a high resolution image of this location. So if we just look at the mountains, this angle that I have right here, you can see the Fuji mountains right there over the top and look at the curvature of this hill, curvature. Now the high resolution image is the exact same thing. Curvature of the mountains is in the Fuji mountains in the back. The riddle has been solved. Harada isn't teasing Tekken 8 or season five with this image. He's just out on a boat on vacation. Meanwhile, you have Tekken 7 in disarray and the whole community is starving. Hopefully this voyage he is on leads us to the path of Tekken 8. Who knows, maybe he's meditating. Maybe this is how he brainstorm ideas for the game. We have no clue how strenuous the development process can be. But I just want to talk about this in the video because I think it's very interesting. One, I had a lot of fun going through and researching and trying to like, kind of like a detective, trying to pinpoint exactly where this picture was taking place. And I think I did a pretty good job. But that's gonna be it for today's episode of Scooby-Doo, Harada, Where Are You? Hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully this did give you some clarity as to what this means. Uh, it kind of means nothing, but at the same time, I think it's still cool to learn about Japan. Of course, I'm a Yoshi main. Japanese culture is very cool to me, which is what really inspired me to dig a little bit deeper and learn about the Japanese lore. But like I said, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.